Hey guys, Robbie here from CrossFit South Bend with another edition of Wellness Wednesday. Today we're going to try to answer the question, what is inflammation? Now most people, you know, know that inflammation is something bad, they've probably heard the term before, but most people couldn't tell you what inflammation is at a very basic level. They probably couldn't tell you the different kinds of inflammation and there's an important distinction to be made between uh, two major types that we'll talk about today, acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. And lastly, they probably wouldn't be able to tell you what you can actually do to minimize inflammation uh, very effectively and to make it so that you're not always in an inflammatory state. So today we're gonna to talk about those three things and try to get you a better sense of what inflammation is and, and what you can do about it, what you can do to help yourself when it comes to inflammation. So first things first, at a very basic and intuitive level, what is inflammation? At that basic level, inflammation is your body's emergency systems responding to an emergency. Um, so, you know, the same way a local city is going to have a police department, a fire department, you know, a hospital, emergency medical teams, the same way uh, a state or a country is going to have, um, you know, uh, either the National Guard or, you know, uh, a military force or something like that. These emergency response teams to deal with emergencies, your body has emergency systems to deal with emergencies. So when you get a sprained ankle, uh, inflammation is the process by which your body goes about healing uh, that sprained ankle. It's your body's emergency systems rushing to the scene to fix the issue. When you get a cold, uh, inflammation is the process by which your body is helping you to uh, recover from that cold. When you get you know, about a food poisoning or when you are exposed to poison ivy or something like that, the reason why your skin gets red is because it's inflamed. It's your body trying to deal with this uh, emergency. Now, when you initially uh, hear that, that might sound like it's it's something good, right? We don't want to be without any inflammation. And, and to a certain extent, it is, right? So nothing in health is kind of either all bad or all good. Uh, insulin, cholesterol, none of these things are all bad or all good. Same thing with inflammation. Inflammation is something that if we didn't have any of, we would, we would quite literally die. We would not be able to survive in the world. Inflammation protects us from uh, things that might uh, do us harm. So in a certain sense, uh, inflammation is incredibly important and you definitely want to have some of it. The problem comes when you have too much of the wrong kinds. So now that we have a basic understanding of what inflammation is, let's talk about the two different kinds of inflammation and or the two kind of broad types of uh, inflammation and let's talk about which ones can actually be beneficial or useful for you and then uh, the other types that maybe not, not so much that can actually contribute to ill health and degenerative disease and so on and so forth. So the first type of inflammation is acute and local. Okay, so let's explain both of those terms. Acute means, in, in this particular instance, short in duration. So humans are designed for this. Humans are uh, fantastic at dealing with acute inflammatory stressors. Things where, you know, we are generally, let's say, non-inflamed, and then we've got a you know, run away from a bear or something like that, or we deal with, you know, a really bad cold, or we get a, a really bad sprained ankle or food poisoning or something like that, and our inflammation just shoots up like a rocket ship, and then the body systems come in to try to calm everything down, and then it comes back, and then we go back to this kind of, you know, normal, healthy level uh, that we're supposed to be at where we're not super inflamed. That can actually be, in certain instances, uh, healthy. We, we are meant to deal with sort of these acute stressors or acute forms of inflammation every once in a while. Um, that's totally fine. Uh, but when it becomes chronic, when it becomes something where you're not necessarily going up to, let's say, a level 10 of inflammation because you're dealing with, you know, uh, food poisoning or a really bad cold or something like that, but let's say it's that commute to work every single day where you hate the commute and then your boss is yelling at you uh, and then you're eating a really crappy diet and then you don't exercise. You know, this is just kind of you staying at a level six or seven of inflammation all the time. 
and it never goes back down to kind of that healthier level of, you know, that, that base level of things where you get to recover from things. So acute inflammation uh, can actually, is, is something A, that we're, we're, we're meant to uh, deal with and handle and we're actually very good at, and in certain instances can be beneficial. Exercise, for example, actually puts your body into an inflammatory state, a mild inflammatory state, depending on how much uh, exercise you've done. But that becomes beneficial if it's done acutely, if it's not done chronically, if we're not doing too much, too much exercise, you know, too much of the time and we have sufficient time to recover, that actually is beneficial to our body. So acute inflammation uh, can be beneficial in certain contexts and it's something that we're very, very good at dealing with. Local. Local means, uh, at least in this context, that the inflammation is localized to a particular point or area. So if you get a sprained ankle or if you get food poisoning, you know, generally it's going to be localized to your digestive tract or upper respiratory tract infection. It's going to be in one place. Or if you get exposed to poison ivy, it's just going to be in that point on your skin. Local is to be contrasted with systemic inflammation. Systemic inflammation is where there's inflammation all over your body. Uh, and that's, that's really, really, really not good. That's where, you know, your body is kind of chronically and systemically, uh, inflamed because there is some insult, whether it be stress or, you know, uh, you know, lack of nutrients or exercise or something like that, that can lead to, um, systemic inflammation. So acute and local inflammation, local inflammation, meaning that the inflammation is generally short in duration, you know, a few days to potentially a week or two, uh, and local, meaning that it's, you know, in one part of your body rather than all over is something that we're very, very well equipped to deal with. And it's something that in certain cases, like exercise, can actually be beneficial. Chronic inflammation, on the other hand, and systemic inflammation, which is the really bad type of inflammation, the type of inflammation that is leading to all of the diseases of Western civilization that we're dealing with today, uh, that's the type of inflammation that you want to uh, avoid. That's the type of inflammation that leads to um, all sorts of conditions, autoimmune conditions, things like Hashimoto's thyroiditis, uh, and Graves disease and multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis and so on and so forth. Um, other, other degenerative conditions like, uh, type two diabetes and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and all these things in one way or another are traceable back to, uh, issues that have arisen from chronic and systemic inflammation. Okay. So what is inflammation? Let's go back and let's just review here real quick. What is inflammation? It's your body's emergency systems responding to an emergency. Okay, so that's what is inflammation. What are the two main types of inflammation? Acute and local inflammation is something we're very well equipped to deal with and can actually be beneficial, but chronic and systemic inflammation is really, really, really harmful and bad and not good. And eventually, while it's not as, um, it's not as severe, as acute inflammation, like if you get a really bad bout of food poisoning or you get some really, really bad virus, you know, that's going to take you to a level 10 of inflammation and chronic inflammation will be at maybe a level six or seven. While it's not as severe in the moment as acute inflammation, over time, being at a level six or seven of inflammation will, you know, degenerate your brain, your muscles, your hormone production, all these different things. So chronic and systemic inflammation is really the type of inflammation to be avoided. Okay. So we know what inflammation is now at a basic sort of metaphorical intuitive level. Uh, we know what the two different types are. Now let's talk about how to minimize inflammation. And in particular, we want to minimize that, um, that sort of chronic and systemic inflammation. Now, of course, uh, no one wants to get, you know, uh, a foodborne illness or something like that. And no one wants to get uh, viruses on a regular basis. But like I said before, humans are very well equipped to deal with these things. So if we get them and, you know, if we get proper treatment and if we have proper time to recover, things will end up being okay and not degenerating into really uh, bad health issues. On the other hand, if you let chronic and systemic inflammation go long term, you're going to run into really, really, really bad things. So what are some things you can do to help with um, chronic and systemic inflammation? 
<clears throat> I would say the number one thing that most people can do on a day-to-day, -day, three times a day basis to at least start to attack this problem and to attack it very effectively is eating a nutrient-dense, real whole food diet. That is item number one. That is gonna do a tremendous amount to reduce the overall level of chronic and systemic inflammation going on in your body. It is a stress on your body when your blood sugar shoots all over the place, which happens when you eat lots of processed foods and foods out at restaurants. It is a stress on the body when you are eating foods that are devoid of nutrients and are very, very high in anti-nutrients, things that can irritate your gut or can actually deprive your body of anti-nutrients or can deprive your body of certain you know, minerals and vitamins that you would need to absorb. Uh, all of these things are a stress on the body. So instead of eating uh, nutrients with, or instead of eating foods with high toxin loads and low nutrient loads, we need to eat foods with high nutrient loads and low toxin loads. This is real whole food, quality protein, meat, fish, seafood, eggs, poultry, uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of vegetables, healthy fats, fruits, nuts and seeds, herbs and spices, uh, so on and so forth. So those things we need to try to eat, we need to try to avoid things like processed foods, sugar, soda, alcohol, uh, and then you know once you've taken care of that, certain other things, potentially things like grains, dairy, and vegetable oils. So that's number one. Number two, if you're not exercising, you have to get some form of exercise. Now, <clears throat> as I've said in other videos, we just don't agree, and we think this is one of the ways inflammation can, can go awry with the kind of eat less, work out more paradigm of health that's been you know kind of put out there for the past number of years. It says, oh, well, you know, just eat a thousand calories a day, <clears throat> excuse me, and then go on the treadmill for 45 minutes to an hour today, you'll be fine. The problem with that approach, uh, well, there are a number of problems. So one is you get inadequate nutrients uh, from the thousand calorie diet, you get inadequate amounts of energy, and then you're chronically and systemically inflaming your body by going on the treadmill for 45 minutes to an hour a day. That is absolutely not necessary. Uh, and it's actually a hindrance if you don't get enough recovery. So we believe in eating more real whole food uh, and exercising less, believe it or not, but exercising in a smart fashion, high intensity interval training, strength training, gymnastics, things like that, to achieve the health and wellness goals that you want to achieve. And the old paradigm of kind of, you know, chronically inflaming yourself by eating a thousand calories a day and, you know, exercising for an hour or two a day, uh, we just think is mistaken. We think if you use uh, the benefits of high intensity interval training and strength training and gymnastics and eat more nutrient dense food, that will help you along the way. So that's number one, changing your diet. That's gonna be probably the biggest bang for your buck in terms of actually dealing with inflammation. Other things that are really important, we talked about this in the More to, More to Health and Nutrition video, things like uh, getting adequate amount of sleep. Duration isn't the only thing that matters. You gotta get eight, eight hours a night, but you also have to do it from like 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. It can't be from like 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, or excuse me, 2, 2 a.m. To, uh, to 10 a.m. You know, like a college student schedule or something like that. You gotta try to go to bed as close as you can to when the sun goes down and then try to uh, wake up when uh, the sun comes up. Obviously in the dead of winter, that's gonna be harder than normal, but uh, to the extent that you can do something along those lines, that's gonna be beneficial. Minimizing stress. Stress, in essence, is inflammation. Uh, stress is a major contributor to uh, chronic and systemic inflammation. So if you have uh, a lot of you know stressors or you're, you're not very good at kind of dealing with the stress that comes into your life and you don't have stress outlets like exercise or yoga or meditation or things like that, you need to find something that's fun that you can enjoy and that helps you relax and that will do a dramatic amount to minimize um, your inflammation. So things like, you know, getting enough sleep, minimizing stress, eating a nutrient dense diet, uh, getting enough exercise, those are gonna be the first layers of the onion to actually peel off in order to minimize stress. If you've done all that stuff and it's still not getting fixed, there are a lot of other things that can be done that I'll talk about in future videos, things like investigating your hormone levels and then uh, digging down and seeing how well your digestion is going and see whether you're having, see whether you have 
adequate detoxification capacity and what are your cortisol levels like? All of these things can in one way or another contribute to chronic and systemic inflammation. But I'd say the very first thing anyone can do right now to help themselves, make sure you're eating a nutrient rich, uh, toxin uh, free diet, exercise, you know, sleep as much as you can, uh, hopefully eight hours a night, kind of in that pattern that I was talking about and minimize stress. All right guys, so hopefully now you've got a good sense of what inflammation is, the different types of inflammation, acute and local inflammation versus chronic and systemic, and how to effectively minimize chronic and systemic inflammation, which is really the root cause of a lot of degenerative diseases that we're dealing today uh, with today in, in the Western world. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in. This is Robbie here from CrossFit South Bend, signing off, and we'll see you guys next time.